Hello, America. Eddie Marcus here again, and I want to talk to you about some things that are very important to the people. They should be important to people everywhere, especially people in our country. Before I start this presentation, I want us to kind of reflect a little bit. There are things going on all over the world, so they are not unique to America, but we are not all over the world. We are in America. So I want to see if we can get each other or together here, reflect on America. This America, some people call it great. Some people call it not so great. And whatever you call it usually reflects how you have felt your experience here in America. And your experience here is genuine whether others are familiar with it or not. But let's just take a look back. When we think about the things that's going on in our country today, what got us here? As I look back, I, some people say, well, don't go back to the founding. We don't want to go back when the, when the Indians were driven off their land. We don't want to go back that far. Well, that was a bad thing that this nation was founded by people who came in and wanted to colonize it and drive the people that were already here off their land. That wasn't a wonderful thing. That's part of our history, and we can't deny it. We can't run away from it. We have to accept it. Some people might say, well, we don't want to go back to slavery. Everybody knows slavery. Get slavery out. We got to stop talking about that stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can't stop talking about a thing that's always continuously existing. The only way you stop talking about it is when it's packed its bags and gone. Now, many of you might say, well, we know nothing about that. And at the same time, many of us have lived during some trifling times here in America. I'm reminded, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you, what do you think it's like? In this country, this wonderful, great America, God bless America, this fantastic, great nation, the most gracious nation on the face of the earth, when most or a great portion of its population are dissatisfied with what this nation is about when it comes down to their living in America. And when they try to rise up, let the wonderful people of America know about what's going on and how dissatisfied they are with the system that is depriving them of life. And they stand up for it. And the thing that comes out of that are people who are, have dogs posed on them. Dogs, my friends, on a population that's standing up for some justice. Water hoses, fire hoses on them for standing up for what is right. Churches bombed on them for standing up for what is right. Murdered for standing up for what is right. Beaten with baseball bats for standing up for what is right. Institutionalizing what has already been institutionalized, but continuing feeding the veins that give it its, its nourishment and nothing by the name of hatred and racism and bigotry. Has that gone from America? Charlottesville, today, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, New York, Mississippi, all over the nations. I don't want to go on trying to call these states out because it's evident in every state. Maybe low in some places, high in others, but no doubt it exists. What's the evidence? Poverty crime and violence because we have in our great America those who have and those who have not. And at a time when America sunk so low, being fed this nourishment till it brings in a president who wants to go back to the times when the dogs and the bombs were working. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is something that has been put before us. We recognize that it is not a mystery because now you have a president who the people that you have hired to protect you, the people, from foreign enemies and domestic enemies alike. 
You have a man in charge who seems to be your number one enemy. Who's concerned that everybody that is on the payroll that you pay, that is taking oath to protect you, that they honor loyalty to him. Whatever he does to destroy you, try to hide it, nobody better come out and say anything about it. Because if they do, then they lose their job. What kind of protection do the whistleblowers have? What kind of protection when a man sees somebody sticking a bomb under his house and they blow it up and you go and tell them so they can get out of the house? Why is he got to go to jail for telling you that somebody's bombing your house and the one that bombed your house keep running the government? What kind of world are we living in, my friends? I know you're asking yourself this every day. It's not unique to me. Problem is, what do we do about it? That's where we say we've always been troubled at. You've got those who are Republicans who say one way, Democrats who say another. But it doesn't matter whether it's Republican or Democrat. Racism still exists. It doesn't matter whether it's Republican or Democrat, bigotry and hatred still exist. Doesn't matter if it's Republican or Democrat, poverty it still exists. Suffering still exists. Coming down from the people who don't know what to do, from people who are designing that these things happen. What are we going to do, ladies and gentlemen, at a time like this? Well, one thing we know we got to do something. I say, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to come together and fix this world's problems. But we must understand that only we, the people, can fix it. No leadership can because the leadership comes out from amongst those groups who represent all that we have been exposed to. We have not been exposed to righteousness. We have not been exposed to justice. We have not been exposed to love. So, what are we going to do? Well, let's recognize some things, ladies and gentlemen. That's the world's most major problem is ignorance. Let's at least agree on that. Ignorance. This ignorance is the mother of selfishness. You know what selfishness means? It's mine. It's mine. All I care about is mine. Give me mine. Hatred. You got yours and equal to me and I don't like it because I'm bigger and better, more special. I'm superior to you. And because of what the effects of that would be and you're not like me, we're going to race, cause a race problems. And see if we can separate it based on Racism. This ignorance is promoted by the lies that we have to use. The cheating and the stealing that we engage in every day. The terror and the war that comes from this. And no less the crime and the violence. This ignorance is taught through several schools. Some we may recognize and others not. Some of it is known as tribalism. We've heard recently tribalism when we start talking about Republicans and Democrats, especially when they were talking about impeaching an ungodly man that has found, somehow found his way in the White House. They say tribalism. You go to your side and I go to my side. May the best side win. When they try to take a truth and turn the opposite of a truth, a lie, into an alternative truth. What the hell is going on? One of these schools of thought are called despotism, totalitarianism, anarchism, and capitalism. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are many, many, many more. But the type of economies that are open to these schools of thought are traditional. Many of them expressed in markets and commands and then some of these are mixed. But ladies and gentlemen, the social structures that this, my friends, is founded on still includes the family. It includes religion and law, economy and class. And all of these have been hijacked 
to represent America. It's lies. It's bigotry. It's hatred. All of these things that's supposed to be the symbol of what we pay attention to determine whether we live like this or make it better have been hijacked. And so when we see what's going on in America today having some virus, they call it a coronavirus, and others are saying that it is some kind of signals or uh, that is being uh, stat on certain buildings sending out, I even heard somebody call it G5, whatever that G5 thing is, is supposed to be about. They, these signals are going into that affecting humans' bodies to the degree that what you see happening all around us in this world is the result of that, but they're calling it a virus. Well, we don't know, but how sad is it when you're living in a nation where you can't trust those who are supposed to be feeding you, clothing you, sheltering you, protecting you. Well, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, no human. And I want you to understand this because we have been taught different that no human is smarter, better, more deserving, entitled, superior to any other human. Likewise, no nation is better, superior, more deserving than another nation. And the beginning of wisdom, my friends, is to recognize and accept the truth about the power of responsibility. The responsibility for the existing of the earth and all of its qualities, when I'm talking about qualities, I'm talking about all of the resources that are embedded in the earth, put here for a purpose. While those purposes might not be known at one period in time, in time, they are recognized and brought to bear. I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, when we come to the social problems, the ones that work, they do not exist. Why? It is resting someplace in the arms of a responsible government, a government that does not exist. And it too is found on the social structures of family. This time when it refers to family, it means to all human beings, not just in America, but all human beings on earth. Have you ever sat around and thought about your immediate family that you're living with right now? Might be two, three, four, you guys, five, some families. He uh, got 21, 21 children, 30 children. But imagine the parents of those. How many kids did they have? And before them, how many kids did they have? And how many cousins have come out of that? How many aunts and uncles have come out of that? Whoo, my friends. Can you just imagine? I mean, with your own little family, all of a sudden, you can start seeing them spreading and spreading. You can see them spreading all over your city, all over your state. And after a while, there will not be room enough and thin your borders to contain them, so they start spreading elsewhere. I won't try to say that it's as simple as that because many of you believe that what I'm saying is basically true, but the enemy of this truth decided that it wanted to be the master. And so rather than spread, it wanted to keep everybody centered. And they built a tower that could house all the people. Well, I know they didn't think it was going to be no billions like today. But they put this tower up to house all the people. Why did they go up rather than abroad. I think they wanted to center the power. And every time the tower was built, someone went closer to heaven. Someone went closer to what they conceived as being God, or perceived as being the heavenly host, the heavenly realm. They were going to work their way back up there. And you have heard that the, because of their motive, because of their intent, they lost it. 
and that this tower, if you can accept that, was destroyed, brought down, and people scattered everywhere. Now, if you want to use that analogy, that's okay, because people are everywhere, and they do have different tongues, but it doesn't matter where they're at. It takes food for survival. It doesn't matter where they're at. It's going to take housing for shelter for them to live. It doesn't matter where they're at. It's going to take education for them to progress. It doesn't matter where they're at. It's going to take health care for them to survive sicknesses and diseases such as the coronavirus. It's going to take it. It doesn't matter if it's at the bottom or the top or the east or the west of the earth and all in between. Those things that are essential for one are necessarily essential for all. And that great parent who made sure that this earth could exist and we'd be on it would have those things available to us. But not just that, made sure that we'd be, we would be equipped that each of us would play a role, that each of us would be given gifts that would allow us to do things to cause our nation to progress. Some of us would be given gifts to the electric light to discover electric electricity. Some of us would be given the information necessary to do telephones. Some of us would be given information necessary to do computers. Some of us would be given information necessary to do cyberspace in all kinds of ways. For what? For we the people, just like food, we the people, just like water, we the people, just like air, we the people. But that can only happen in a righteous kind of government. Otherwise, you're going to have people coming up with profit, markets, business, economies, the mark, the uh, money. I need more money. So in your efforts to become a billionaire, multi-billionaire, and you rise up there when you're 1% or half a percent, 50%, 70% suffer. Meaning that this is not the government of righteousness, nor is it the government of God. So I say, ladies and gentlemen, the human purpose here on earth, if you don't know it, is to live here as though we are in heaven. And that means that your needs, your wants, your desires, and mine, that's the goal. This means peace and prosperity, freedom and joy of life, and the fulfillment of our dreams. All of those things that are essential for our survival being met. And this great God was not like the slave master that said, you got this job and you stay out here. You live over here. And I live over here. Give me your kids. I'm going to do what I want. No, 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 man. This wasn't based on that principle. It was based on a different principle. It was based upon the fact that all of your needs could be met. That you would have the joy of life. Now, This doesn't happen in America. We all know that. What are we going to do about it? Well, we got the professionals trying to see if they can diagnose what's really going in America and across the world with this sickness and death warrant. And at the same time, you've got those who are trying to profit from it. got people setting up saying that they want to make a change in government. They want to make a change in the system and the way we do things. But how many of you are willing to engage yourselves in that process? How many of you are willing to be committed to change such as that? How many of you will put your lives on the line? To make sure that you do not accept a lie, but not just that you don't accept a lie, that a lie does not be used to cause any negative outcome to anyone else. How many of you are committed to that? You know, we need 
everyone to play a role in this effort. This morning I was awakened by hearing a social media uh, analyst stating the reality that a person that was hired and took oath and paid to keep an eye on what goes on in the name of the people. Whether it's foreign or domestic, if it's wrong, make sure that we know, the people know about it so they can do something about it. Now we hear that having done this when he should have been praised and, and honored, the man, the chief operating official in the land, not the world, but the land, wants to fire them. And he's making it evident that he wants loyalty. However evil this one is, wants loyalty for him and 300 million Americans be damned. The evidence is that when someone stands up and say, watch out, some evil is going on, this crook is out here, and this crook, and let me say it again, this crook fires them. So they go home, fired. I guess when you're fired, you can receive unemployment in this system. What are we the people doing about that? They did their job. They honored their oaths. And they told us what was going on. And this evil one who was perpetrating this evil against you, the people, and this nation, fired them. And you know what? This one, you paying him. He is being paid by you. Now he says he's giving his money back to the people, giving it back to the country. So he's just, what, buying, paying for a way to screw the people of this country. You know the evil that he's doing. You don't have to ask nobody to report that. He does it before you every day. One year he's been doing it. Two years he's been doing it. Three years he's been doing it. Still doing it and planning every time you go on the internet. You see a picture of him holding his hand about how great he is and how much he wants to be the next president also. Another four years of this devilishness. Sad thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, and there are so many people in this country who support him. I'm reminded by the time the president was having a a conference, I might have been, I don't know the kind of conference right now, and he had all his cabinet members around the table as he sat there with his arms like this. And everybody that he had chosen to be in the cabinet had to honor him, like get on the knees and acclaim how great he is. That is absolutely pathetic, absolutely pathetic, and it only take place in hell. That could take place nowhere where decency is. And no man or woman that got any kind of decency would not take a, a vow like that. You got people getting married. They taking a vow to stay with each other for life regardless of health, regardless of economic situation. And they walk out on one another. And here's some lame brain from the pit of hell directing the traffic in America and getting away with it. And when you start talking about solutions, you're coming up with that same old crap that led us down this path and put us right here. America, that's foolishness. That is foolishness. Somebody voting, sticking to a Democratic Party that brought us here. And another Somebody sticking to a Democratic Party that led us here. Or voting for a Republican candidate that is making this place worse than any hell we've ever known. Mr. Kevin, I'm going to have to call you back. Making this worse than anything we've ever known. And we're going along with it. And so we say that president is no good. We say that those who bend to his loyalty is no good. But I say to you, how good are you? You're the ones that's feeling the pain. Yeah. Are you like a lap dog that can be kicked 
and legs broken and you just turn over to the side and say, please, please, please. We weren't made to be a lap dog. Woo. But we get a chance to do something about it if we are willing. I say to you ladies and gentlemen, that going forward in this country, I propose that we make a change. I propose that we do what has never been done here in America before. I don't even know if it's been done anywhere in the world. Is that we recognize that we are family. That we accept the fact that the law of a family is love. That our goal is not just being prosperous, but that we have life and have it abundantly. And I'm not talking about some religious stuff. You have not seen any confusion like you have seen when you start talking about religion. I'm talking about what you yourself can identify. You know you need food. Know you need shelter. Know you need education. Know you need health care. And... Everybody needs it. And so you don't have to point a finger at somebody that's getting something for nothing. Everybody works. Unless you're too old to work. Unless you're too young to work. Other than that, you've got some kind of engagement in the process of creating heaven here on earth. And it's a beautiful thing. No need to lie. No need to cheat. No need to steal. No need to argue. No need to terrorize. No need to have war. No reason for hatred. No reason for bigotry. No reason for racism. Ladies and gentlemen, when your needs are being met, when you supposedly are satisfied, how can you be dissatisfied unless somebody come by and tell you a lie? Tell you that somebody's robbing you when you can look over there and see that they're not. If you can have what you want, how are you being robbed? If you can have what you need and desire, how are you being robbed? Well, the only way that can happen, my friends, is ignorance champions such ideologies. So I want to take this moment, ladies and gentlemen, to say that the future is ours. It doesn't matter what Donald Trump is doing right now. It doesn't matter what the Republican Party is doing right now. It doesn't matter what this coronavirus is doing right now, but the future is ours. Those who remain living, not just in America, but all over the earth, the future is ours. And whether we come up as a strong, giant individual spell with love and compassion for one another or a demon or cancer just killing everything we touch, it's on us. I don't think you like when you say this pain coming back to you. You remember the saying, do unto others as you'd have others to do unto you. I say do unto others as you'd have God to do unto you. God is invisible. Every now and then, it made God known through miracles. But those that are sure, God is invisible. And so if anything happens to you in a godly manner, it's going to happen through we the people who allow the spirit of God to live in us. The God of love, not the God of hate. Do you think that, do you, let me ask you this. Do you think Jesus Christ, now I know a lot of you don't believe in Jesus Christ. But do you think Jesus Christ who laid his life down on that tree would do anything like Donald Trump is doing? This nation is filled with people calling themselves Christians and they holding Donald Trump by his hand. They had his rider lifting him up and he from the pit of hell to some. My, my daughter told me, say, Dad, don't raise your voice so much. You old, you might have a stroke or a heart attack. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, I can't really blame the people who have been brought up in ignorance. I can't really blame the people who don't know any better. But if I do, I want you to know I'm not going to sit down and act like I don't. And if I have to fall and scream from a mountaintop and I get a chance to get up there, I will do it. Because I have made up my mind. I am going to live in America and there will be peace, there will be prosperity, and there will be heaviness on this earth if I continue to live. And the only reason that it doesn't is because the devil have a conversation with God and say, if you take him out, I still rule the world. I don't know, God might decide to take me out. But that'll be the only reason. 
Because otherwise, I ain't, Trump ain't my president. Any government that allows hatred and bigotry and racism to exist is not my government. And I might be here in the, in the middle of America, but I'd be, I'd be down before I accept the system. I'd be down before I have a knowledge, been given some inspiration about what is much better and I don't represent it. I don't care what these churches say. I don't care what you've read, what you believe. I don't care. When you're hurting, I hurt. When you're in pain, I'm in pain. And I ain't going to take when you're in hurting, I'm hurting. When you're in pain, I'm in pain. And when you're joyous, I'm joyous. And I tell you, there's a difference between pain and joy. I choose joy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all on you. What are you going to do? When you go to those polls, are you going to vote for a Democrat that got you here? I don't care what, how safer they are than Trump or the Republicans. Or are you going to vote for the Republicans who are chasing this country to hell? Or are you going to vote for something better? Are you going to look at the little babies that, not just, not, not just the little babies, but the little kids. You ever seen the little kids, topless, as they walk around the little thing they're doing? The little crazy things they're doing as they try to learn life. Isn't this beautiful? It's so wonderful. Many of you got grandkids. Sometimes I see my little grandkids. Some of them I never seen in the physical, but I can see them on this on this social media, and they're just as comical and funny and as loving as they can be. And if in their hearts and in their minds, like the the life that they're living now, they don't have to suffer for much. Few of them do, but most of them are just waiting to grow up. And I want to make sure that when they do grow up, and as they're growing up, they grow up in beauty and not in mud and filth that's set up by greedy, 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 greedy demons. I ask for your help. When you go to those polls, I ask that you have made up your mind and have decided that you're going to want something different. Now, I ask you, you might say, well, I, am I saying I want to be your president? No, I don't want to be your president. I want to enjoy my last years, whatever, they, if I got them. But I don't see anybody else that's carrying this baton. And so I will accept it. Don't think by me accepting it that I want to be a leader of that. All I want to do is use the, the tools of government to allow you to be expressive about the outcomes of this nation. I don't know everything. I just know that peace, prosperity, joy, freedom, and love, and all that other kind of stuff. I know that. It's to be felt by everybody in, on earth, not just Americans. And how to do that? I know that I have people in this country who know various ways to do it. One way you can always do it is take all the money out. Take all the money out. But everybody was going to play a part in the process, and by so doing, everybody's entitled. Now, that's one way. I know that way will never fail. Now you, with just degrees and stuff like that, might know something better. And if you do, and that's what the people want, it's fine with me. But this hell has got to go. I don't say nobody for get for more. So I'm saying to anybody that's voting for Trump, and anybody who continues believing in a, a system of government like this, It's because of ignorance. Now in my last minute, I would like to say, hell is, has four rooms of thought. Hell has four rooms of thought. One room is called democracy. And out of democracy comes hell. We're living in it. Another room of thought is called socialism. There are those that are living under that rooms and they are and there's another room called communism there are those that's living and being trained in that room there's another room called dictatorship there are those that's being trained and living in that room and if they all came up to the top all of them conflicted and the only thing you can bring out of that is a war that destroys the world. So I think 
we got another opportunity now to make a difference. And 2020 is offering us that opportunity. We have a couple of hundred years of under this oppression. And blacks over 400 years. And the people of the earth ever since they've been here been living under ignorance. It's time we wake up, ladies and gentlemen. It's time we try something we can't see, can't touch, can't feel. But trust the evidence thereof because it lives in us. The next time this is Eddie Marcus saying, when you go to those polls, you write in on a blank spot, Eddie Marcus. No, I will not be on the ballot. I'm not asking you for one penny. I'm saying to you, if you want peace and prosperity and joy, let it be evident by doing something. Not expe expecting somebody to come down and, and pour it out like a bucket of peace a bucket of prosperity. No, you get up off your tail and do what has got to be done. It ain't much. Just treat people like you want to be treated and don't let anybody walk on you. Thank you.